Greetings once again, gentlemen Jim here, the brother from Harlem with the high school education. Well, on my journey, now the summer is ending and I'm ready to go to high school. This is the school that I want to go to that's going to prepare me to just make me some clothes. Like I say, I had no plans on this being what I would end up doing. I just wanted to make me some clothes. What an experience I had in high school. That's why I say the brother with the high school education. Because the high school of fashion industry is a very unique school. It's the only kind, the only one of its kind in the world. And it prepares you for the garment industry. We don't really know what we're going to do once we learn what we learn at this school. But at least we're prepared. And that's the one thing about this school. It prepares you whether you go into the industry or not. Whether you just make clothes or something for yourself or you make a profession out of it. So here I am. First day after a long, hot summer of having fun with the brothers and the boys on the block and just enjoying life now. And I'm 14 years old and eager and ready to go at it. I'm a go-getter. It's 1959. I had never seen a sewing machine before in my life up close, outside of a picture of one. Didn't know how to thread it. I didn't know nothing. There's nothing that I hear a lot of people say, I always wanted to do this. Well, it wasn't what I always wanted to do. So let me be clear about that. But it's something that I listened to the instructors that instructed me in the beginning. They said, if you, you can. Now the if you was, we're gonna teach you, it's up to you to comprehend and really wanna do this. Now I started off in ladies' fashions, because that's what I was drawing, ladies, women in dresses and whatnot. And we started and they gave us a lot of basics on the drawing part, but what they gave me on the sewing part was very, very unique. That's what got me good. It's because the one thing that they teach you is the fundamentals of sewing. And I grasped that real good. And I got to be real good in the sewing part of it. And they were always asking you to be creative and be imaginative of what you can do with clothing. Well, to be honest with you, clothing is clothing. There wasn't but so much you could do that hadn't, somebody hadn't done prior to you. So you think about it, you think about it, you think about it, and you say, wow, what can I do that's different? And after my first year, we had a project to do. My second year, for which was going to eventually be in the little fashion shows, because we always had fashion shows. You know, you make something over here, then you show it over there. And we had fashion shows all the time. And the girls were very, very creative. And then I discovered something at an early part in my sewing career. I really wasn't that good of a designer to come up with something original, but I could recreate anything that I saw. So I became a recreator. So I would just take what they did or somebody else did or something I saw, I add a little twist to it. I call myself the world's greatest recreator. But as far as imagining ladies' clothes, that was far-fetched from me. It wasn't until later that I realized why. I didn't think like a woman. Now, a lot of the guys uh, who went to our school and who were good fashion designers, they were gay people. So they, the guys thought like a woman. I didn't. I'm probably the only straight guy in ladies' fashion. But I started there. I didn't know any better. So that's where I went. And it wasn't until after a year I realized that I couldn't make it in fashion designing because two things, and I always tell these two things, and I ain't ashamed to tell them. I wasn't white and I wasn't gay. So the chances of me really making it was slim. And then I wasn't that creative when it came to ladies' fashions. I just wasn't. But I copy anything now. But coming up with something original, couldn't think of anything. And then I came up with something original that kind of took them by surprise. Because I became such a great sewer in the basics, 
there was nothing I couldn't sew in the beginning in ladies' clothes. But the key to it is they always told us several things. You got to learn how to sew straight. You got to learn how to set zippers in. Now, this is, this is why I always say those are two of the, key, the three key elements. The third one didn't come into play until I switched switch, uh, uh, majors. So I went to, from fashion designing. But I could sew a zipper and you wouldn't even know it was there. So one time we had a project and the instructor wanted it to be different. Now we're going to make something different. Everybody else is making something. Well, it just so happened, <coughs> excuse me, that I was really before my time. Why? Because I could set a zipper and you wouldn't know it was there. So for this project, what I did was, I, this was 1960, put zippers. I had taken a jacket and a pair of ladies' pants that I had made, and I cut the sleeve off, and I put a zipper in both sections of it. The zipper was so well hidden, you didn't know it was there. Same thing with the bottom of the pants, at where a short pants would start, that I cut the leg off, then reconnected it with a zipper that you couldn't tell was there. So during the fashion show that they had, my model came out. The teacher didn't really see this project until it was finished, because I wanted to surprise everybody. I was kind of hiding it from everybody so they couldn't see it. So when my model came down, did a little turn, and then went and zipped the sleeve off, and zipped the lower part of the legs that turned the little suit that she was wearing into a short sleeve suit, short sleeve jacket, and short pants, like Bermuda short length, right? Crowd went wild. Teacher went wild. There were industry people in it. They went wild. They said they had never seen that before. Blew me away. Oh, I got an A plus on the assignment. But the teacher told me, said, my father, that's a great idea, but that won't fly. Understand, people, this was 1960, and I'm ahead of the curve. So, because these were professional people, both my instructor and the industry people there, because they always came to our fashion shows to see who was going to be the next great whoever. It's always, it was like that then, it's like that now. Industry people are always at that school trying to find out who's going to be the next great whatever. Well, I didn't know anything about patent concept. See, you can't really patent clothes, so let me make that very clear but you can patent a concept of what you can do with clothing. That would have been a provisional patent concept, okay? That would have been legal then, and I could have owned the outright rights to that. Well, needless to say, that didn't strike big until the 1970s. That's when it got big, when you zipped off everything. But I did it in 1960. It had never been done before. Wasn't until later on in life that I understood why. Well, for one, the zipper hadn't been in existence that long. It wasn't. And then there were big, thick, clunky zippers. They didn't have the little fine ones like they have today. They weren't made out of nylon curls like they were today. How do I know? That's what my mother did in the day. She worked for a zipper, zipper company. I think it was like Waldy Cohen Dye or something, Jewish firm. Long before you had the YKK or the whatever it is, she worked for this company out in Long Island, and they made zippers. And my mother would bring us home bags of zippers. Now these were zippers that had some kind of defect in them. How you do not slide them up and down, but they had all kind, you know. And I just looked and studied zippers, but they were the teeth were real thick, so they weren't the, the modern day type zipper. They didn't have invisible zipper. They had many of that thing. It was just a big old brass metal zipper. So it was my first introductory to zippers because a lot of the clothes I had when I was earlier in life had what? 
buttons. See? So zippers had just really kind of come into play. So there wasn't a lot of experimenting outside of putting a zipper in something just to zip it up and down in pants, to loosen the pants in the fly area there. But that was it. So when I came out with this zipper thing and I looked over here and I looked over there and nobody had this idea but me. Now, too bad nobody was there to advise me then about patenting the concept of it. Who knows what would have happened. But as you guys know now, that zip on and zip off is a very big thing in the industry. Very, very big. It was then. It, it broke in about the 70s. Not discovered it in the 60s. I didn't really discover it. It's just something I played with. So if I want to take claims to anything originally I've ever done in my life, that was it. Okay? But you see how this is unfolding? You see how that school got me aware of what was happening? That's why I never stopped mentioning the high school of fashion industry. That's why I never stopped saying the brother from Harlem with the high school uh, experience. That's all I ever had. That's all I got. I got it in high school. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. That's just one of the journeys that I had in high school. So once again, this is the brother from Harlem with the high school education giving you a heads up.